In Creo Schematics, there are seven different types of diagrams that you can create, and I'm going to touch on all of them and my personal preferences towards using them. So first off, here we have an example of a block diagram, and a block diagram is a high-level map of a system and how the different parts of those systems are connected. And so it could represent the flow of fluid or electricity or even just information through a given system. And to be honest, I usually use other tools other than Creo Schematics for a block diagram. And it usually depends on the level of complexity I need and my audience. If I'm trying to make something really complicated that has a uh, a very important audience. I'll probably end up using Visio to be honest. If it is less complicated and a little more informal, I'll probably use PowerPoint. And if I'm just making a block diagram for myself, I'm probably going to end up doing it by hand. The next kind of diagram that we have is a circuit diagram. And a circuit diagram is used to track the path of electrical signals through a system. And so here you have the circuit diagram. I'm not an electrical engineer, so I really don't have much use for electrical diagrams. Now I'll get into what I really use a lot inside of Creo Schematics, and that is the wiring diagram. And a wiring diagram, like the name implies, allows you to set up the different wires and cables that you have inside of an electrical system. And this is where I find that Creo Schematics really excels for me because I use this as a precursor to cable harness design inside of Creo Parametric because I can create all the different objects on my schematic. I define the necessary properties that enable logical referencing in Creo Parametric, and then I export the XML, and I use this as a precursor to my cabling. One thing I want to mention is that you'll see a lot of diagrams that end up having a format around the diagram, and personally, I find that unnecessary. Again, I just think of Creo Schematics as what I'm using in order to facilitate doing my wiring later on. I really think that putting a title block or a revision block on a diagram is unnecessary. So again, wiring diagram, my big use there. Now, besides those first three types, there are also interconnect versions of those. And we have what's called a block interconnect diagram. And then you can also create something called a circuit inter interconnect diagram, which I believe was introduced in Creo Schematics 4.0, and also a wiring interconnect diagram. And the idea is that you have these three different objects which are related. So you start with the block interconnected diagram, where you are laying out, again, the systems and the different harnesses that you're going to have. And you're going to pass this information down to optionally a circuit interconnect diagram and a wiring interconnect diagram as well. So it represents different levels of complexity that you can use. And you can go from block interconnect to circuit interconnect to wiring interconnect diagram, or you could go right from block interconnect to wiring interconnect. And while I have used the block interconnect diagram to wiring interconnect diagram, which is referred to as the bid wid process, I honestly find it a bit of overkill just because it requires an immense amount of setup and making sure that all the properties are defined properly. And then you use the search tool inside of Creo Schematics in order to identify what you need to place in your wiring interconnect diagram. So again, I just find it's just like more than uh, I usually need to do in terms of wiring for the different, typically vehicles that I work on. So we just discussed six different kinds of diagrams that can be used on the wiring side. The block diagrams, circuit diagrams, wiring diagrams, and the interconnect versions of all three of those. In terms of doing fluid systems, 
You can use block diagrams just like you do with electrical systems. And you also have a type called P and ID, which is short for a piping and instrumentation diagram. And I don't have one in this particular schematic. If I go to the Design Explorer, I could create a brand new sheet and I'll choose a template to use. If I right click on here and go to the properties, I can choose from the diagram type drop down list to make a P and ID or piping and instrumentation diagram and then click the OK button and then double click on it. So here I have my blank sheet. Then if I were to go to the Catalog Explorer, here we have the drop-down list in the upper right-hand corner set to p and ID. And I could choose if I wanted to lay out different groups in here. Hey, here I have my different piping groups and I have maybe some pipes or instrumentation lines. And here I have hierarchical entities. Uh, so in this way, we could use the different entities on here for laying out the objects that we wanted for the piping and instrumentation diagram. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.